Everyone, my name is Ko. My name is Andre. Your cutie Warda, Galu, Heli, Fatima, and I'm Barik. We are May. Today I'm going to have a video clip not in Korea, but in Indonesian University Education. Indonesia. Today I'm going to have two special guests. Could you introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, my name is Galu from Chemistry Department. And my major is the physical material chemistry. Physical material chemistry mm-hmm. is very good. Oh. I'm Halli. I'm from the same department, and my topic interest is biochemistry. Biochemistry mm. is very cool. Mm. It's good for you. Yeah, cool for me. Yeah. Mm. Today I'm going to show you a very common, also very interesting mm. diagram. That mm. is phase diagram of H2O. Wow. wow. If you took a, take a look at these diagrams, three lines. No line, curves. Ah, yeah, mm. you are right. Three curves yeah. can be seen in the phase diagram of H2O. Actually, there are three curves, such as sublimation, breathing, and vaporization. Right. Mm. Mm. Interestingly, there is triple point, where is gases, liquid, and solid one coexist at the same time. Wow. Mm. Can we utilize this phenomena into our daily life? More products, some kind of industrialization? Mm. Yeah, sure. Let me state for you once. Freezing, drying. Freezing, mm. drying. Mm. Yeah. Freezing, drying using the sublimation concept. Okay. Yeah. So, when the pressure under the triple point, then the solid one will change directly into gases. Mm. So it means the H2O from the product can be removed. And once the H2O removed from the product, it will inhibit it, the microorganism that can degrade the product. Wow. Mm. That's your topic, right? Yes, only one of my topic area. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's actually why we can find many dried fruit, dried nut products in yeah, the yeah. supermarket. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm can have dried mango, mm. dried banana, even dried durian. Oh, Yo, <laughs> durian. <laughs> have you tried that before? Then? A lot. I tried a, a lot. lot. Yeah. <laughs> She's very dangerous. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, okay, back to our face diagram. And then. So, three curves, right? Yeah, curves. curves. And then curves <laughs> seen to make three different regions. Mm-hmm. Solid, liquid, and gas. Actually, mm. there's the fourth one. Ah, okay, oh. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine what will happen if we put the H2O molecules in the condition high pressure, for example, above 220 atm, and high temperature above 380 degrees Celsius? Professor, Andrea. I guarantee it should be plasma. Well, I assure you, it's not. Oh, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's actually a super critical fluid. A super critical fluid. fluid. No. Can you explain more about this? Sure. Supercritical fluid is actually a condition where the water, uh, the H2O, actually not a gaseous state and mm. also not a liquid state. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, professor, so the structure in this state is different? It's different structure ah. and also different properties. Mm. Ah. Mm-hmm. So this supercritical fluid has the properties that is the gaseous-like, Yes. 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 Yeah. For example, a very a low super tension, mm-hmm. uh, also low um, viscosity, mm-hmm. and also high um, high diffusion, uh, diffusion rate. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. and on the other hand, it also has some properties of the liquid. Liquid. Yeah. Oh. Liquid like properties. Liquid like right? properties, oh. which is the high density and also super sol- solvent power. Oh. Ah. So, what do you mean by super solvent power? Well, you know that H2O is a polar molecule, the Mickey oh, Mouse. Yes. Mickey oh. Mouse. Oh. <laughs> it's Mickey Mouse, professor, yeah. not Goofy. Not Goofy, Mickey. <laughs> uh, Mickey. Yeah. So, as a polar molecule, it can actually uh, be a solvent for another sol- uh, mm. polar molecule. Mm. But in this case of supercritical water, it mm. can actually become the solvent for the non-polar molecule as oh. well. Wow. Wow. Interesting. So it make it wider application. Wow. Mm. Very, very useful. useful. Very useful. Mm. Yes. Oh. One more thing. <laughs> <laughs> there is one interesting point that can be, <coughs> be drawn from this curve. It's related to our hottest topic nowadays. Mm. Oh, 
what is it, Professor? Global warming. Oh, oh, global global warming. warming. Yes. When we check again our curve, we can see that we have freezing line. Oh, sorry, freezing curve. This freezing curve has a negative slope, unlike other flu- other liquids. Mm. This means that the ice has more volume as compared mm. to the water. Mm. And 10%? this gap, yes, yes, by 10% gap. So imagine uh, we have global warming and then this global warming related to the melting of the glacier. And when it's melt, the sea level may increase. Do you think which one would contribute the north or the south pole for the increase of the sea level? Uh, both, both of them, them isn't it? Mm. No, no, no. Oh, wow. It's south pole. Oh. Ah, why is, why south is pole? it? Why south pole? There are two interesting points here. Okay. First, the glacier that is available in south pole is actually sit on the top of the continent. So when it melts, it goes to the ocean and adds up the volume of the ocean. So that's why the sea level would be increased. Mm-hmm. On the yeah. other hand, in the North Pole, we have glacier that sit on the top of the water. And we can only see 10% of it. Mm-hmm. The rest is under the water. And this 10% that we can see, together with the 10% gap from the volume change, they will compensate each other. So there is no effect of the melting from the glacier in North Pole. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. So, Professor, why every broadcast uh, all over the world, uh, in every social media, mm-hmm. shows North Pole to show us how dangerous climate change is? Yes, but uh, in my opinion, they would give us uh, some kind of warning oh. to be more careful with our environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Respect to our North Pole and South Pole, I think we need to preserve our environment for our next, next generations. generations. That's correct. Hmm. Oh, Professor. Oh, yes. I have one more phenomenon. So, uh, I, li- I really like noodle. Uh, you mm. like yeah. noodle? Yeah. You so, like some kind of Korean noodle? Oh, I very like Korean noodle. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay. So, mm. one day, I cook a noodle, mm. but by, mis- by my mistake, suddenly, I put the flavor first, mm. and then the noodles. But the result, the taste uh, is more better than the original recipe. But I don't know why. So, can you explain why? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, this is associated with the boiling point elevation in chemistry. Oh. Boiling point mm. elevation. Yeah, yeah. elevation. When you put the flavor into the water, the pure water it means you uh, decrease the pressure it means more high temperature will be needed to get the boiling point mm. that is why when you apply higher temperature and you will get chewy noodles oh, that's oh. the reason mm-hmm. Interesting. it's a good lesson for every mother in the house, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the private shelf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When we cook in the higher temperature, mm. then the food go in the table is still very hot yeah. and will taste better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. one of the factors. Yeah, yeah. That's true. definitely. Uh, what about the? I want to give one very interesting question. Mm. And then, can you make the pinpoints of a room temperature condition on this phase diagram? It, it will be in the liquid, in the liquid area. area. Ah, that's true, sure, right? Area, yeah. What about this? Mm, I just prepared one beaker mm-hmm. to get it the water. Mm-hmm. And then I just put it in the air for two weeks, or three weeks. And then mm-hmm. I just later on, some water decrease mm-hmm. and then maybe vaporize. Mm-hmm. If phase diagram say stable conditions achieved by the room temperature condition, yeah. where is the liquid in there? Regarding this one, we are planning to make another video clip. Mm. The moment, see you later. See you. See you. See you.